Well, welcome back. Now we're in section uh, 4.3, the derivative and shapes of graphs. So we're, again, we're analyzing the concept of the derivatives, and we'll get into the first derivative and even a little bit of the second derivative to be able to figure out how the derivatives affect the shapes of graphs. The first thing we have here is this, the first der uh, derivative test. Dealing with the first derivative, increasing and decreasing test. If the derivative is greater than zero, first derivative is greater than zero on an interval, then f of x is increasing on that interval. Why? Because remember, the derivative is also known as the slope of the tangent line. When the slope of the tangent line is greater than zero, aka it's positive, when you have a positive slope, that means you're going up. That means when the derivative is greater than zero, we, 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 we read a graph from left to right, that means the graph is going up. And similarly, if f prime of x is less than 0 on an interval, then f of x is decreasing because the derivative is the slope of the tangent line. The slope of the tangent line is negative or not going down. It'll be decreasing. So this is where the derivative is less than 0. Now, as we defined before, a critical number of a function is a number c in the domain such that either f prime of c equals 0 or possibly where the derivative does not exist. If f of x has a local maximum or minimum at c, then c is called the critical number of f of, f of x. So, and you'll notice about these critical numbers and how it relates to the max min. This guy right here is a minimum. So where derivative is equal to zero at, it's a minimum. Now, if you look to the left of it, you'll notice my, my, my graph is going down, which means my slope has to be negative. I hit my point, and now the slope is going to be going up or positive. So to go down, then up, you change from a negative slope to a positive slope, makes minimum critical numbers. And similarly, if you got your critical number, where the derivative is equal to zero, and just before that, the derivative was positive. That meant I had to go up, I hit my critical number, and then go down where the derivative is less than zero, I have a maximum. So when the derivative is going from positive, hits your critical number, and then to negative, that makes maximums. When your derivative is going from negative, you're hitting your critical number, then positive, that makes minimums. So you can see by analyzing the uh, not just the critical numbers, but just before the critical number and after the critical number what the slopes are, you can actually tell whether you have a maximum or minimum type of point. The first derivative test tells us this. That suppose that c is a critical number of a continuous function f of x. If f prime of x changes from positive to negative at c, then f of x is a local uh, maximum at c. If f prime of x changes from negative to positive at c, then f of x has a local minimum at c. And if f prime of x does not change sign, then f of x has no maximum or minimum at c. So you can see how this first derivative test changing from negative slope to positive slope gives me minimum critical numbers. Going from positive slopes to negative slopes gives me maximum critical numbers. If you don't change signs on your derivative, then you don't have a critical number. That's called the first derivative test. And one more definition, there'll be a lot more definitions coming in this chapter, but one more definition we're going to look at is called an inflection point. And a critical point is where the derivative is equal to zero or where the derivative does not exist at. An inflection point is a point on the function f of x that is a point where the curvature, the second derivative, changes signs. So the, cur the curve changes from being concave upward, positive uh, curvature, to concave downwards, negative curvature, or vice versa. When we talk about curvature, is going to be talking about the second derivative. So when the second derivative is changing from negative to positive, or changing from positive to negative. So how we find an inflection point is we take the derivative, second derivative, set it equal to zero, and solve. So an inflection point is by taking the second derivative, setting it equal to zero, and solving it. So let's take a look at some examples here. There we go. Given f of x is equal to negative 4x cubed plus 8x squared plus 60x, find f prime of 4 and tell what the whether the function is increasing or decreasing at x equals 4. Well, first thing I want to do is find, before I find f prime of 4, I want to find f prime of x. So the derivative of this thing would be negative 12x squared plus 16x plus 60. So there's my first derivative. They want me to calculate f 
prime of 4. In other words, what's the slope of the tangent line when x equals 4? I'm trying to tie it back into what we did in chapter 2. So this would be equal to negative 12 times 4 squared plus 16 times 4 plus 60. Sounds like big numbers, so we'll use my calculator here. Negative 12 times 4 squared plus 16 times 4. plus 60 gives me negative 68. So what's going on here? Well, two things. Uh, F prime of 4 is equal to negative 68. And being it's a negative slope, and remember it's the slope of the tangent line, so we have a negative first derivative here. That means uh, being it's negative, I have to be decreasing. So the derivative at 4 is negative 68, and because of that sign negative, I can tell you that it's going down. All right, well, let's take a look at this uh, thing, same function here. f of x equals negative 4x cubed plus 8x squared plus 60. Now, watch what we do here. This is basically what we're going to be getting you guys to analyze throughout the rest of this particular uh, section, 4.3 material. Take this function and find the critical points and the intervals of increase and decrease. Well, to find the critical points first, we have to take the derivative, which again is going to be negative 12x squared plus 16x plus 60. Okay? Now, I believe we can factor some stuff out of this one. I would factor out, let's see here, can I factor out a 4? Yeah, I can. I'm going to take out, actually, I'm going to take out a negative 4. So I'm going to set it equal to 0. I'm going to factor out a negative 4. That's going to leave me with 3x squared. Taking a negative 4 out of a positive 16 is going to be a minus 4x. And taking a negative 4 out of a positive 60 is going to leave me with a minus 15. Set it equal to 0 and solve. So now, if I work this problem right, I've got to, got to factor it and I'm down to a quadratic and I set it equal to zero. Now, hopefully we can sit there and solve this thing by factoring it. If it doesn't factor, we always have the quadratic formula. But I believe this thing is going to factor. So, here we go. This would be negative four times. All right, let's do an anti-full thing here. So, this is end up being, let's see here, three x squared factors into three x times x. Now, what are the factors of 15 that have, when I full it out, will have a difference of 4? Well, 15, I got a choice of 1 times 15. The other choice is 3 times 5. All right, and so let's see here. When I multiply, I want a difference of 4. So if I do the 3x times 3, that will be 9. And then the 5, we'll go there, that'll be 5x. And 9 minus 5 is 4. So this thing's going to factor. And what are my signs going to be? Well, let's see here. I've got a minus here, so one's a plus, one's a minus. But I want the bigger number to be a minus. So I'm going to put a minus there, and I'll put a plus there. Okay? And you should double-check myself by folding it back out. Make sure you get the same thing. But this one works. Now, to find my critical numbers, so take derivative, set it equals 0 and solve. Now I'm going to take each factor that has an x in it. Don't care about the negative 4. 3x plus 5 equals 0, and x minus 3 equals 0. Solving it, subtract 5 from both sides, I get 3x equals negative 5, or x equals negative 5 thirds when I divide by 3 on both sides. So there's one critical number. And the other critical number is, I add 3 to both sides, and I get x equals 3. So, but what did they ask me for? They asked me for critical numbers. So, critical numbers. The x coordinate is, uh, that's for critical points. I got critical numbers. I got x equals uh, negative 5 thirds, and I got x is equal to 3. If they want points, I got to give them y coordinates. How do you give them y coordinates? Well, you plug, a, plug these numbers into the original equation. So this is what I'm going to do on my calculator here. So go back to the original equation. So I, off, off screen here, I'm going to take negative 4 
type in negative 5 thirds and cube it and then add 8 times negative 5 thirds squared plus 60 times 5 thirds and double check me on this but make sure I get it right but I believe when using my handheld calculator I get a number negative fifty nine point two five nine two six uh, real well work problem here so that's alright got some decimals there and when I plugged in three on it that was a little nicer I got hundred forty four Okay, so these are my CPs, critical points, because I gave you both the X and Y coordinate. But now, look at this thing here. They want me to find the intervals of increase and decrease. This is what they're going to teach you guys to do in class. So once you've got the critical numbers at five, negative 5 thirds and 3, to find intervals of increase and decrease, you are going to draw yourself a number line. And you're going to label your critical numbers in order on there negative five-thirds and three and you're going to plug this number line is going to be a representative of the first derivative okay so now you've got your critical number so these are the points where the derivative is equal to zero at now we're going to pick a number in each interval called test values so I want a number less than negative five-thirds negative five-thirds is a uh, negative one and two-thirds so I'm gonna try a number like negative three that's in that interval and I'm gonna plug it into my first derivative. So it'll be negative 12 times negative 3 squared plus 16 times negative 3 plus 60. And when I plug in on, on mine, I, I got, double check me, but I got a negative 96. Honestly, I don't care what the number is. I care about the sign. It's negative, so everybody in that interval is going to be negative or it's going to be decreasing in that interval. Pick a number between negative 5 thirds and 3. Any number will do. And since I have a brain, I choose 0 because that's got to be the easiest number to plug in. And 0 is in this interval. When I plug in 0 in this equation, I don't need any calculator stuff. That's real easy. I get 60. Don't care what the number is. What's the sign of? It's positive, which means everybody in that interval will have a positive uh, uh, derivative, which means it's going to be increasing. I'll pick a number bigger than 3, I choose 4, so I'm going to plug 4 into my derivative, and plugging 4, that would be negative 12 times 4 squared plus 9, 16 times 4 plus 60, and when I plug in 4 into my derivative, I end up getting a negative 68. Don't care what the number is, the fact of the matter is, it's negative. So, and just to tie this into web work, the intervals of increase, where is it increasing at? That would be a positive first derivative. That's between negative 5 thirds and 3. Notice I use open parentheses on this for the intervals of increase and decrease using the interval notation. Always open parentheses because right at negative 5 thirds and 3, you're neither increasing nor decreasing because these are your critical numbers. And you're decreasing on the interval between negative infinity all the way up to negative 5 thirds union from 3 to infinity. So this is my intervals of increase and decrease. Now, what's the big deal? Well, the big deal is right here. From analyzing the number line, notice I haven't looked at the graph at all. I'm analyzing the number line here. State whether the critical point is a maximum or a minimum. All right, so here's my crit first critical point was that negative 5 thirds interesting negative 59.25926 number. The other critical point is 344. But notice, look at your number line. I am decreasing, going down. I hit my critical number, now I'm going back up. If I decrease, hit my critical number, and then go back up, what kind of point is this negative 5 thirds going to be at? It's going to be a minimum point. So this guy is a minimum point. And if I'm going up, I hit my next critical point, and then I decrease, go down. If I go up, hit my point, and go down, that makes 3 a maximum point. So this guy's got to be your maximum point. And remember what we mentioned about from the last uh, video there was that uh, 
it occur, you know, if the minimum value, uh, the minimum occurs at negative 5 thirds, the minimum value is negative 59.25926. The max point occurs at 3, and the maximum value is 144. And then last but not least, to get you flowing on this particular section, we're going to be given the same function, one, -eyed, one function and beat it to death, and we're going to be looking for the inflection number. Inflection number is where the der second derivative is equal to zero and you solve. All right, so here we go. Before I find my second derivative, I gotta find my first derivative. First derivative, again, was negative 12x squared plus 16x plus 60. Your second derivative is gonna be negative 24x plus 16. There's my second derivative. To find an inflection number, you set it equal to zero and you solve. So, uh, subtracting 16 from both sides, this gives me negative 24x equals negative 16. Now I'm going to divide by negative 24 on both sides and clean them up. This is going to give me x is equal to, let's see here, negative 16 divided by negative uh, 24. I think you can factor out an 8 here. And if I do that, factoring out an 8 out of both these two guys, I get 2 thirds. Now, this is the inflection number. If I had gone back and asked what is the inflection point, just to see the difference between the two, an inflection point requires you to have the y coordinate. So x is two thirds, so I'm going to type in two thirds into my function here. And when I do, I get some awful number, 42.37037. I could probably convert that to a fraction, but inflection point requires a y coordinate. Inflection number, it's only the x coordinate. So that's how you can distinguish between the two when they're asking you these questions. Again, I hope this has been helpful to get you guys set up for section 4.3 as your professors are going to go on and get deeper into this material, especially on this idea of increase and decrease through number lines. And remember, what you're doing with the first derivative with increase and decrease, you're going to be also doing with the second derivative on uh, inflection numbers and that later on concept of intervals of concavity. So study hard.